ago, the London Monarchs kicked off the World League in Frankfurt. Amid helicopters, fireworks, and razzmatazz, London's Phil Alexander got the whole thing underway. Eventually got the ball off, off, of, off of the commissioner, and uh, eventually the, the helicopter took off and placed the ball. I was just concentrating so hard on not, on not actually making a, a hash of the whole thing. He didn't, but the Monarchs made a poor start. The first points were scored by Frankfurt when Judd Garrett was tackled in his own end zone for a two-point safety. Galaxy kicker Stefan Laszlo added a field goal before the Monarchs hit back with a 28-yard touchdown run by David Smith. However, the game turned around completely when Stan Gelba took over as quarterback and led the team to a third-quarter points explosion. We were on the three-yard line, and just as... You know, just as everybody does, we tried to run it the first time, I think, and got stuffed, maybe the first two times. I'm not sure. I know we ran it. We tried to run it out of there, and then we called a long ball, and John Horton just went up and made one of his patented catches over top of a DB that was shorter than he was, and, you know, he was like a rebound. He just told me, throw it up. I'll get it, you know, and he told me, it, he told me that from day one, and I didn't believe him until then, you know. That 97-yard touchdown reception was a record that stood all season and was added to just minutes later when Dana Brinson went on an eight-yard reverse to dive over in the corner. A relieved head coach, Larry Kennan, celebrated a hard-fought 24 points to 11 win as the Monarchs were on a completely different planet to the Galaxy and started out on the road to World Bowl I, an ultimate victory. Four years ago, the Monarchs arrived at Wembley Stadium contemplating a home debut against arch-rivals, the New York, New Jersey Knights. Like any royalty, they paraded their jewellery to the 40,000 fans, and as in the previous game, London made a slow start. New York running back Eric Wilkerson was first out of the blocks. Wilkerson on the draw with a first down for New York. Breaks free at midfield. 45, 40, 30, 25, 20. To the 10. Touchdown into the end zone where he is down just on the one foot line. They ruled that he was down at the one. So a touchdown saved, but it was only postponing the inevitable. Quarterback Jeff Graham completed the formalities from the one yard line. Trailing 7 3 at half time, the Monarchs showed their class with another third quarter display of exhilarating football. Smith steps into the end zone for the touchdown. Second down and 25. He's got Over him. the middle, he's got Riley open. Riley will score for the Monarchs. Touchdown, London. Andre Riley, who scored on that 62-yard pass from Gilbaugh, set to return this punt. number 31 who blocked it and recovered it but the Knights refused to lie down fighting back with a Barry Belly field goal and a touchdown by Wilkerson then with only seconds remaining and trailing 18-22 they needed a touchdown to steal the game this is second down at 11 he's getting his own defense again he's probably going to throw it back up inside Graham standing in the middle as a man Derrick Dodge. That Derrick Dodge interception sealed the Monarchs' victory and left the team with no doubt that things were rather spiffy. ago week three saw the coming together of two unbeaten teams London versus Orlando the Thunder brought the offensive find of the season in quarterback Kerwin Bell London brought their defense motion that was Mitchell meanwhile second and nine off the Statue of Liberty play a fake Kerwin Bell over the middle and intercepted from the 45, first and 10, Bell, play action, in trouble, set. 
The London defense restricted Orlando to two solitary field goals, whilst the offense racked up the points. Smith, touchdown. Third and ten. Delva has some time. Going deep again. Has a man caught. Touchdown. Alexander. Touchdown. Although Orlando finally got a touchdown when Bell threw a 39-yard pass to Chris Roscoe, it was too little too late. Anyone present at Wembley that night will remember the match for the final score. With two minutes remaining and leading 28-12, London head coach Larry Kennan sent in British running back Victor Abubadike. So they called me and I went on and I think it was... Uh, uh, a power play to the right and I took the ball and I didn't think I was going to get another chance so I almost broke it so I went 15 yards in my first carry and then they told me to stay in and I looked at the sidelines just to be sure <laughs> and I went, I went like that to the coach and he says yeah okay fair enough I stayed in the second one I got about four yards and then the third one I got closer I think the third one I ran all the way to the goal line you know um, to our side and to the left hand side and I thought I, I got in myself, but the referee says, no, no, no. And then I looked at the clock, you know, I said, oh. and then I looked at the side and I said, stay in, stay in, stay in. I said, oh, no. I said, okay, it's now or never, you know. And they handed me the ball of tackle, um, of guard right, power of guard right. That's the E-man, he scores! So a final score of 35-12 with Victor Abubadike, the first non-American to score a touchdown in 1991. Victor X is still very much alive in 95. Week four of the 1991 season saw the London Monarchs on their first transatlantic away day. They had to travel over 4,000 miles to play the Birmingham Fire in Legion Field, Alabama. Stan Gelbar led the Monarchs to what proved to be their only shutout of the season with the offense totally dominating the fire. They outgained them by 404 yards to a measly 112. Kicker Phil Alexander had a couple of field goals whilst the offense scored three touchdowns, one of which will live in the memory forever. Sprint draw, David Smith, touchdown London. Third and five, Galbo in trouble, and almost sacked, no in the grasp rule, he reloads, got a man wide open. Touchdown London. Andre Riley, 33 yards later. Oh, man. Today was a Birmingham Tea Party Day. He's been all London's. Quick slant, touchdown. What a throw to Andre Riley. Gelbaugh put that one right between the eight and the zero. 12-yard touchdown. 27 to nil, and the Monarchs moving on to a perfect 4-0 mark on their way to World Bowl One. Four years ago, the London Monarchs were sporting a 4-0 record and were fast becoming superstars. So much so that they even got into the charts with their own record. On the field, they continued to add to their league's only unbeaten record. It was a total team display with everyone throwing a spanner into the works of the Montreal machine. What can Proctor do now? He's side down by three points. Looks down the centre. And that's an interception by Virgil Robertson. The Monarchs then, first and goal, looking for that first touchdown of the night. Gelbar looks towards Horton and finds Horton in the end zone. Touchdown, Monarchs. And guess where that's going? Monarchs first and 10 on their own 32. Gelbart slips a little, but then a gap opens for him. And he's running more like a wide receiver now. Still going, still going. Andre Riley blocking, and this is some scramble. London have a first and 10 on Montreal's 41-yard line. Gelbar looks for Horton and finds Horton. A slip by Steve Lofton. And that one will count. Touchdown for the Monarchs. And no prizes for guessing where that's going. <laughs> a tough first half for the Montreal machine then. And Michael Proctor wishing he was somewhere else. Possibly anywhere else. Let's act like it's nothing to nothing. Let's pour it on him, baby. 
defense, get a shutout, stay after them all the time, offense, pour it on. We're coming out gunning from the hip, acting like it's nothing, nothing. If we can score 100, we'll score 100. Let's go get them. Yeah! So it's Montreal to restart the game. Bjorn Nitmo in the gloom after the fireworks. Dana Brinson collects on the eight yard line. And some good blocking there, and Brinson is too fast for Nitmo, and Brinson is away. They won't catch him now. This man can do 40 yards in just over four seconds, and that is a touchdown for London. And what a start to the second half. Monarchs then have first and 10 on the Montreal 40, and that's the screen pass to Judd Garrett. And just look at the protection from those nasty boys, and Garrett could go all the way and has, and that's a touchdown for the Monarchs. And so the points kept piling up. In the fourth quarter, John Horton completed his hat-trick of TDs when he caught this 12-yard pass from Stan Gelbar. The machine avoided a shutout with a touchdown of their own, but the Monarchs were dominant. So much so that even backup quarterback John Witkowski got in on the act, throwing a 22-yard scoring pass to Tony Sargent, who, along with Larry Kennan, knew exactly what it all meant. Oh, yes. Five and oh! Great job, great victory. Well Regular schedule tomorrow. One o'clock we look at film. Three o'clock we run. Your ass is mine tomorrow. Monday and Tuesday are off. Yeah! At the halfway point of the 1991 season, the London Monarchs were 5-0, undefeated, and ready to face the Raleigh Durham Skyhawks, 0-5 oh, and, and winless. The faithful Wembley crowd expected a feast of football from their heroes, but it was the Skyhawks who were first on the board with a 44-yard Wilson Hoyle field goal. Although the Monarchs struck back with a one-yard Jeff Alexander touchdown, the Skyhawks replied with a two-yard run by John Birch to lead 10-7. London again took the lead just before half-time when Sten Gelbau found Andre Riley with a 25-yard touchdown toss that had left the perfect Monarchs worried at the break. The, uh, the idea of this game is to win. The last time I checked, we were ahead 14 to 10. We gave them three early in the game. Defense just keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Hey, we knew they were a good offensive team coming into this game. They scored a touchdown on you, big freaking deal. We got to just keep playing, keep your poise, don't lose your poise. They're holding you, they're grabbing you, they're tackling you, doesn't make any difference. Keep your poise, let's stay in the game. After the interval, the Skyhawks came out with nothing to lose and everything to prove. Lowry, the running back, off the play fake to him. McAllister over the middle, complete to the 30 and loses Patterson. Down the sideline and inside the five yard line, third and goal. McAllister again brings them up in the eye formation. Two tight ends, McAllister keeps it, tries to get on into the end zone and he lost the ball. He has lost the ball at the goal line. They wrote it's the fumble. London ball. Here comes Gabriel. He's upset about that one. Gabriel storming out on the field. A penalty flag has been thrown against the coach of the Skyhawks. That Bobby McAllister fumble proved to be the turning point of the whole game. Riley Durham never looked like scoring again, whereas the Monarchs never looked like losing. Big hole, Alexander for the end zone. Touchdown, London. There he goes to the corner. The corner for he the touchdown, it. and Tony Sargent. Peter Bush hangs the punt. He's got a wall. He's got a wall set Brinson up. Brinson to midfield, cuts through to the 30, 25. Dance is free. There is a penalty flag down, however. Hold on, there's a penalty flag. That electrifying run was called back, but David Smith added another TD on a three-yard run, leaving the Monarchs with a 35-10 victory and looking forward to a three-week road trip to the USA. Week seven of the 1991 season saw the London Monarchs off on a three-week road trip to the USA. First call was San Antonio, Texas, with an interesting matchup between the Garrett brothers, London's running back Judd against the Riders quarterback Jason. Things 
didn't start as the Monarchs would have wished. The gives to Ricky Blake inside the 10. He'll score! Gallery to kick. Flanagan and Brinson deep for London. They fight over it a bit in the end zone, and finally five yards deep, Flanagan will bring it out. Look out! Might be a safety, it is! Nine nil down, but the Monarchs were made of sterner stuff. Drive has been impressive, but Alexander trying to finish it off. Inside the five, touchdown! Alexander scores, and London right back in this one. For the Monarchs, number 20. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Yell ball. Looks right, goes right, touchdown. John Horton for the score, the Monarchs lead. Big play here for San Antonio. They gotta get this first down. Here comes the blitz. Garrett sets in a hurry, fires deep middle, intercepted. Dedrick Dodge has got it heading the other way for the Monarchs down the sideline. Garrett to beat. Finally brought down at the five. Intercepted by number 33, 62-yard interception return by Dedrick Dodd. We got 110 till halftime. It is 14 to 9. Sprint draw. Jeff Alexander to the corner. Touchdown. Alexander's second score of the night. I'm really impressed with the London offense. They really know what they're doing. Stretch. Greg Newhouse hoping his troops can come up with something. It's first and goal. Gelba out of the end zone. Touchdown again. And again, it's Horton for the score. From Alamo Stadium in San Antonio, Texas, the unbeaten Monarchs lead 28 to 9 over the hometown Riders. And Gelba once more. Stan rolls and throws on the run. Got a man. Touchdown, Tony Sargent. <laughs> How about this? Five <laughs> possessions and five touchdowns. Gelba with three scoring throws. Hey, they're making it look easy. 38 unanswered points to finish with a 38-15 victory and a 7-0 record as they look forward to crunch time in the Big Apple. Week 8 saw one of the most keenly anticipated rematches of the 1991 season. Undefeated London went to the Big Apple for a showdown with the New York New Jersey Knights who were still smarting from their loss at Wembley in Week 2. The monarch who did the damage that night was safety Dedrick Dodge with his game-saving interception in the dying seconds. And so to New York where the Knights wanted revenge and it turned out to be a tough match dominated by defense. Second and six. Tried to roll right and then found Marlon Brown, the outside linebacker. Third down. Couple to go for the Knights and they go with the option. Graham got hit by Lockett. What a collision that was. Here comes the blitz. Graham with flags down. Lockett's all over it. Third down and four. Graham trying to buy some time. He might take off with it himself. Finally does. Runs into a big wave of Monarchs. And oh boy, they're going to come up swinging again after that pile up probably. The Monarchs would end up with a record 14 sacks, but by the end of the third quarter, they only led 9-0 thanks to the Alexanders. A field goal from kicker Phil and this 41-yard touchdown by Jeff. In the final quarter, Eric Wilkerson scored on a three-yard run to bring the Knights within two points inside the final two minutes. Graham to the middle, intercepted by Dedrick Dodge. And this will ice it. Touchdown. Talked about putting your best part of your team on the field and winning it for you. Six weeks ago at Wembley Stadium, the Knights had a drive going that Dedrick Dodge finished off with an interception at the eight-yard line with 10 seconds to play. Tonight, on the road with 107 to go, he finishes this one off as well. And on the last play of the game. And fittingly, Marlon Brown knocks the ball loose. Lockett picks it up. You gotta be kidding me. Lockett will take it. The cake's been baked. There's the icing. Touchdown, Monarchs. It's all over. A game much closer than the final 22-7 scoreline, but Larry Kennan and the Monarchs now looking at the possibility of a perfect season. 
Week 9 of the 1991 season brought the London Monarchs to Sacramento, California and closed a tiring 18,000 mile road trip. After Dedrick Dodge's stunning interception return to seal the game in New York, they entered this match undefeated at 8-0. They faced the Surge, who were 2-6, and, and the result was never really in doubt. It wasn't a question of whether they would win, but by how many points. First down, Gilboa up top, has a man open. Touchdown, London. John Horton. And just like that, London's on the board. Looking through Danny Lockett's eyes. The helmet cam tonight, worn by the linebacker. Number 94, Danny Lockett. First and 15 for Elkins. And intercepted. Intercepted by Ken Solly. And Solly still on his feet at midfield. And down to the 40-yard line. Finally taken down by the wide receiver, Carl Parkey, but Parker. And again, the Monarchs have outstanding field position. Straight ahead, they go big hole. Here comes Alexander. Alexander inside the 10, the 5, touchdown London. Whoa, Jeff Alexander, his seventh touchdown of the year. This one, a 40-yarder. This is Horton. Good move by John Horton inside the 10 to the 5 to the 1 yard line. It's a curl pattern. Stan Gulball delivers it in good location. Boom, he keeps his balance. Picks up a blocker and almost scores, showing great second effort. And touchdown London, straight ahead. That's Jeff Alexander just banging it in behind the big offensive line. And right now, London dominating and moves out to a 20-0 lead. Second down and five. Intercepted. Look out. Here goes Dedrick Dodge. All alone, Dodge will take it the distance. 59-yard return for Dedrick Dodge and another touchdown for London. How bad can it get for Sacramento? How good can it get for the Monarchs? And the Monarchs have played well and they're threatening here again. First and goal just outside the 10. Into the corner they go on a timing pattern. Great catch in the corner by Dana Brinson. Oh, put another six points on the board. 10-yard strike. That superb team performance ended in a 45-21 victory for the London Monarchs and a playoff berth as European champions. Only the Barcelona Dragons at Wembley Stadium stood between them and a perfect season, but that's next week's story. The final week of the 1991 season brought together London and Barcelona at Wembley Stadium. The Monarchs were 9-0 and looking to go undefeated for the season. Jack McNell and the Dragons needed a win to enter the playoffs. It was all in the line, but Barcelona took an early 3-0 lead, and then... So Barcelona, a third and 13 on the London 28-yard line. Monarch's defense doing a pretty good job at the moment. Ernie looks and fires right, looks for Davis, and that's a brilliant catch and a touchdown for Barcelona. Phil Alexander clawed back three points before halftime when both coaches were forthright. composure, turn it up a notch. Offensive line, just about that much more. Defensive line, about that much more. Let's turn it up a little bit. Offense, keep your patience. We're all right in this game. Let's go now. You find out what you're made of in the second half now. Let's go. Come on now. Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. We start out on defense. We start out on defense. Really get after them now. Keep doing the things you're doing. Bring it up, baby. Bring it up, baby. Let's go. Barcelona, second and seven on the London 36. Down the centre again, finds Luke Davis, he's past Dodge and he's past Corey Irvin. And what a night it's turning out to be for Davis, a touchdown for Barcelona, his second of the night. The Dragons 14 points clear and looking to maintain their lead. Galbar looks left this time. And a brilliant diving catch 
blocked by Andre Riley. And Riley up again and going for the line. And just stopped. Well, no more than a few inches short of it. So, first and goal at the start of the fourth quarter. Goal by Alexander, and Alexander is in. Touchdown, London. The Monarchs back in it. So the Monarchs within a touchdown, but Massimo Manco soon increased Barcelona's lead to 10 points. Second and 10 then on the 35-yard line. Galvar looks for Riley again and finds him this time. And Riley heads towards the end zone. Riley still going strong and stops. Just yard short by Charles Fryer. First and 10 then on the Barcelona 12-yard line. Galvar looks for John Horton and wheels away from his marker. AJ Green, the cornerback, and that is a touchdown London, and this is on its way into the crowd. But it all proved too little too late, and the Dragons ran out 2017 winners, the first team to beat London. Despair for the Monarchs, but both they and the Dragons now had World League semi-finals to look forward to. Despite their 9-1 record, Larry Kennan was forced to take the London Monarchs to New York for their World Bowl semi-final. A lot of hype surrounded the game with bad-mouthing the order of the day. The Knights were desperate for a win to avenge their two regular season losses to London and were first on the scoreboard with a Kendall Trainer 33-yard field goal. There were more surprises in store for the Monarchs. Second down and 10. Go! The ball is at London's 13-yard line. Knights lead it by a field goal, and Lewis, who got a 65-yarder, goes in motion. Graham looks in that direction, goes for the end zone, and Lewis has got it! Touchdown, New York, New Jersey! Graham out dueling the MVP so far in this game. Lockett is picked up as he tries to get through. Graham's got Burbage open. Burbage at the 15, spins free, Burbage! And that was Lewis again, check that! Get Lewis with a 49-yard score, number 88. Down 17-0 in the second quarter, the Monarchs needed to strike back before the break. Now Riley in motion behind Gilbaugh. Gilbaugh under fire, throws to the end zone, touchdown London. Riley with the reception in the end zone, and now he and Moore have a few words. Gilbaugh got him, got his man, touchdown Garrett. Well thrown ball as Garrett got matched up with a linebacker coming out that time and it's a 21 yard touchdown. A fighting performance by London but Kendall Trainer made it a six point ball game just before the interval. The third quarter was an even affair. David Smith coming back from a knee operation into the backfield for the first time. Off a of fake, Gelbaugh's got a wide open receiver, touchdown. He went to Pat Davis, his tight end. First touchdown reception all year. Couldn't have been in the game. defensive scout report because that's his first touchdown reception. Larry Kennan's London Monarchs with a one point lead and the ball. Coming out from their own 31 during that commercial break. Mouse Davis was working on the officials over there from the far side. Both coaches now trying to get an edge. Gelbaugh goes deep for Horton, and it is caught. Horton breaks free, he'll score. A new pair of gloves and all. It's first and goal. Wilkerson cutting for the flag, trying to battle it, and he does at the corner for a touchdown. New York, New Jersey. Wilkerson. The Knights missed a two-point conversion, and so the Monarchs led 28-26 a lead they held until the dying minutes of the final quarter when they faced a third and one deep in their own territory. It's third down and short. And over the middle looking to Horton who's all alone. A great call on third and short and Horton in a foot race with Jones. Horton, touchdown, London, what a call, 78 yards. That's why he was coaching the air. A brilliant call, and with David Smith adding another TD in the dying seconds, 
London had again beaten New York, this one 42-26. With Larry Cannon receiving the regulation bath, all that remained was a World Bowl matchup with the Barcelona Dragons. And that, as they say, is history. The high point of the season was June 9, 1991. The first World Bowl played in front of 61,000 streaming adoring fans. The venue, Wembley Stadium, the mecca of British sports. First and ten, Gelbar going long for Horton, Friars there, Horton takes it away from him. John Horton headed for the end zone, and the first touchdown of the World Bowl. Good blocking by the offensive line, of intercepted pass, Crossman will walk in for the touchdown. Gelbar. Memories of June 1991 and the London Monarchs' triumphant demolition of the Barcelona Dragons in World Bowl I before 61,000 ecstatic fans at Wembley.